we move back to what I think, in my opinion, is your best play. This is a play called Undercover, written in 1994. Um, again, I'm going to show you a clip. You may again recognize the actor. <laughs> I can hardly follow that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's in here. It's, it's one of the, the greatest ideas and lines that have been written for the Singapore stage. Basically, um, if the play is staged, that means it's the that it's being tolerated. That means the premise of the political play saying that they don't tolerate dissent is false. If they ban it, that means they are intolerant of dissent. But the play being banned is not staged. A play that's not staged is not a play. So either way, it doesn't work. Right? So this is one of the, 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 the lines that is there. But many of these lines right, that are in, in Undercover, which I think is one of the, the, the best plays ever written in Singapore now. I wanted to talk to you about um, the, the whole the use of satire. And you use it in a very, very English way, where terribly English, and, and, and everything is written in this, this Verbal, verbal, verb, verbose way, and you you nitpick on a lot of you know, is this is it a charity or is it a group that does charitable work, which is different from the charity, blah blah blah. So there's a lot of this verbiage that goes on, and for those of you who don't know, I urge you to read the play. It's a fabulous play, very easy to read. Um, new rookie spy called Dolly Parton Ong, literally. Now, with a character called Dolly Parton Ong, it's not a realist play. <laughs> okay? Right, so he already set it off and then um, um, gets hired to be a spy by the civil service and run by this head and then he head, right? And then they decided to transform her and call her Jane because that's a plain enough name for a spy, named Jane. Infiltrates the center, just the center. Right? And where this group is putting up... Not the center, what do. I didn't want to go there. <laughs> Just the center. Where it's headed by uh, a character called Chia, played by the executive director of self <laughs> Again, I didn't want to go there. Um, so, a, and then she infiltrates, gains their confidence, reports back, and um, the center unravels. Right? So, and, um, and then we find out why there is a lot of the play that's happening, a lot of the, and it's all done in an extremely satirical way. That I, I teach this in the university and a lot of students find it, they're, because they're, they're fed on realism, they look at it and say, why does the character speak like this? They're unable to understand the genre of satire, right? So this is that kind of satire that is almost 18th century, they call custom kind of, like, Congreve kind of satire, really, using the high and the low language, and that's happening in there. So, the choice of that particular form to encompass under undercover, talk to me about it, if you can remember that. Can well, it sounds like English satire because I don't know Chinese satire or Indian <laughs> satire. Uh, no, no, yeah. So, uh, uh, but I, I, I imagine that uh, actually. Um, uh, even though I write in English, I purposely write in English and I still don't use Singlish. Mm. And I write at a time, I wrote at a time, I write at a time when uh, Singlish was uh, a very cheap device. Right? Uh, and you say anything in Singlish at one time, anything you say in Singlish will automatically get a laugh. Right? And, and, uh, so, and uh, Singlish tends to make people, uh, put people into specific uh, SEI, uh, you know, level society education or that. So I imagine that actually, for example, for the first play that I wrote home, actually they were all speaking Chinese, right? And this play was translated to English, right? Because that's more realistic, right? Rather than to try to use English to pretend uh, writing a play which actually uh, even they will not be speaking English. Um, uh, I don't know that's a very roundabout way of question is that I don't really think of it as the, the language is, is, is not, even though it, some of the wordplay uh, requires English, right? Um, I, I don't see it as uh, uh, 
necessarily English. Okay. What did they answer the question? Well, I just like to say that again, you're an illustrious company because um, Gobu Se, back in 1966, uh, 64, when he wrote The Moon is Less Bright, mm -hmm. he had the same philosophy. He said instead of making the peasants who speak Mandarin uh, speak a inferior variety or a substandard variety of English, thereby designated them as inferior, why don't we let them speak and elevate it? So to him in his mind, um, the, the, the equivalence of Mandarin is elevated poetic English, which of course sounds very odd because they are peasants and they are speaking in this very flowery language, right? But it was experimental, it was, again, so it's the same kind of thinking that instead of denigrating the language with something that you feel is inferior, you try to match it into something that you feel is that particular standard. So now, <clears throat> this play, which was directed by Ming Chu, one of your very few plays not directed by King Sen, right? Um, now, the creation of this, the whole head, the head uh, is obsessed with playing bridge, yeah? which is a game that I don't think many people play these days, right? And really talks about the espionage, about the interrogation, about no, no longer being very brutal in interrogations, just very suggestive and things go. Now, that kind of scenario of that looks like a bungling head, but then in the end turns out to be the cleverest one of them all, right? Again, this is the beginning of that kind of play that Nathana writes where the audience doesn't know until the very end. Because if you follow this play, you think the head has had it. But in the end, the head comes out and ta-da! It's the one that knows everything and the audience is full. There's one more scene which actually tips the scale for this play dramaturgically. If you, I've done an analysis of it dramaturgically. Basically, it's very compact. One scene leads on to another. The end scene, right? I'll talk to you, talk, talk you through the premise. They're rehearsing this particular play, and the play has a scene where uh, the, poli the police comes in and arrests them in the dark. The end of the play, after the happy ending where Jane and Chiang is rehabilitated and all, a scene is played where uh, actors are on stage, people walk in, the, 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 the theatre is dark, lights are flashing, you hear the sound of people being arrested and being pulled out of the theatre. Right? So, why did you write that epilogue, that last scene? Mm. I, I suppose I want the audience to ask, is this part of the, the play or is it part of the play uh, within the play? Mm. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, which is the better ending? Which is the, better yeah, which is the one they, they, prefer. they prefer? Which one makes more sense? Uh, so I wanted the ambiguity there. But of course in my mind I know that it is the real ISD. La. Mm. Yeah, because this is based on the uh, Marxist conspiracy, right? Mm. And in fact, I was writing in a time when I think Russell had already completed half century Correct. but was not staged, mm. which is also about uh, uh, the Marxist conspiracy. Um, yeah. Mm. And fast forward many, many years later in 2011, you also had MTA <laughs> officers <laughs> barge in in the air. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So you self cannibalize like, huh? that that yeah. how? No, you no, 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 no. Because it's a, it, uh, in in undercover, right? Mm. They always knew that it was a play. Right. Whatever, whether it's a play within a play or just a play, is right. Yeah. But undercover uh, it subverts the process of being an audience. Right. Right. And I, I, I mean, you're writing. 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 You do not know whether the. Yeah, yeah, whether the DA, the read is real, right? Mm. Uh, and uh, so... It is the development of the... Yeah, music. so I have friends, I had two friends who never go to theatre uh, and one of them uh, was trying to get her daughter into uh, Rosyth, I think. <laughs> so, oh, no, no, now the IC cannot go Rosyth. <laughs> uh, then the other one was hoping to get his son to NUS. <laughs> so, oh no, no, not really. So, so what I want to do. Uh, 
uh, and uh, somebody who, who actually knew that uh, he was and this is the age of social media, right? The first night people have Facebooked it, right? <laughs> and every night there's a substantial part of the audience who had no idea. Even up to the last night. So some people knew, some people didn't know. Right? And a substantial portion do not know. So no, Facebook does not reach a lot of people, right? Or at least the, the, the artist, artistic side, the art side of Facebook. And then the other thing was uh, uh, this night, the French uh, uh, guy, he, he, he called his embassy on the last day. <laughs> Can you please come here? You know, he called, uh, they're going to take away my, 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 uh, my student pass. <laughs> okay, right, so. <laughs> that was a, <clears throat> a high point in 2011, I would say. I think, it's again, process, uh, again yeah. it is really something that I feel that and, and can, can I say this? So I'm very naughty, right? So you're right. I told him, said, just not tell them that very night. They collect the IC, right? Then they go back, worry, worry, worry. <laughs> then we send them an email one week later. All of your, if you are required to come down to a meeting at MDA, right? To account, to ask, blah, 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 right? Then we say, it's a party. Okay, so I thought, you see, it's. It's a question of ethics of the audience, oh, right? Yeah. What do you owe your audience? And I really, we really talk a lot through it, yeah. But I felt that the minute the lights came on and yeah. then it was at, right? That whole thing, and I think that's why I feel, I think in a way, ultimately, mm. the final analysis failed because it didn't last long enough. Mm. Oh, it's back to the fifth wall again. Mm. I can go back to my shop. Oh, that's really fun now. Mm. Uh, that's it, yeah. Yeah. So it just went on to you can never run, you believe right, you believe uh, I man all I knew it was a blah. So it just became a one-arm machine. But having said that, I don't want to diminish it. It's, it's I think I wanted to say that, that that is again the power of that kind of, of theatre that is immersive because I think the fact that it was all literally all over the place kind of lets your guard down because you're not focused watching on this glowing piece of stage. And then suddenly you just caught off guard and you wonder and you start asking yourself. I think I think the it has achieved one thing, you start asking yourself questions. Is it for real? What is this? What is this? Once you start asking questions and you don't take everything for granted or you don't accept everything as it is, I think then art has done something quite substantial. We're gonna move on that again to a year before that to what is your most famous play? The most not, might be not your best play, but the one play that you're most famous for. The Lady of Soul and Her Ultimate Ice Machine. Now, um, it was originally published by uh, this publisher called Serious Book Talk. Self published, self published. Don't know who they are, lah. Don't know who they are. <laughs> Serious Book Published. But in this, which I think is out of print, right? If you have a copy of this, this is very valuable. It has a detailed diary of censorship. Basically, Tan Hao kept a log of the experience. So again, this is, you know, a lot of the stuff that Tan Hao talks about, you know, the fear of writing, being censored and everything, that came out in 2011, he's actually experienced it. So what I'm going to ask him to do is just read off of his, since it is his diary, it is of his own voice, uh, and he is here. I will ask him to read from 20th of October to the 8th of November, and just kind of follow the diary of okay. things that happened. 20th of October. 20th of October. Things seem to suddenly come together by accident. They have banned too glam one for crude and vulgar language. Even the NAC said that its artistic merits did not justify the language. Apparently, they had also objected to other things, commenting on the moral survey, making fun of the government's effort to promote Asian values, portraying the civil service in a negative light. Queries to Peru, that's a licensing agency, and Mita, the Ministry of Arts and yeah, Ministry of the Arts, whether this is true only listed uh, and a reiteration that it was language that was a problem. 22nd October, NEC says that it will look at the revised 2 Gram 1 using the new rules recommended by the Censorship Review Committee. Call Pei Tong to ask if we should resubmit Seoul in its original form and ask for new rules to, to be used to. 
Also, we will not get an NEC grant, <laughs> and like private parts go through it intact. Hopefully, Dae Dong says that Michael Chiang's play about transsexuals, uh, uh, private parts was not cut because it was too late, and I suppose because it was meant to close the arts festival. 26 October, Dae Dong called to say that the other has received a letter from Pei Lu to ask Seoul to be revised and resubmitted for assessment according to the discussion he had with it when he went last Monday to check on the status of the script. I told him that I was going to revise the script but along the artistic lines that King Sen and I discussed and to ignore changes that Bellu wanted. He said that he was going to bring the script up to the censorship appeals committee rather than through Pelu because the letter the letter could not take could take not, would take another two weeks more. 31st October, yesterday King Sen went through the new script to see whether he agreed with the deletions wanted by Pelu. Of the 67 pages in the computer manuscript submitted, Pelu objected to material in 36, ranging from phrases to entire speeches. King Sam was willing to go by half of the deletions they suggested. In a couple of places, he argued for the original, adopting the following lines of argument. That we were not disagreeing with the government, or that we were stating facts. They were unhappy with, we need a place with everything, and we are a clean nation, a nice nation, and a fine nation. King Sen, we do not see anything offensive, and the second statement is a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Things we do. <laughs> they also objected to what we need is a place with so. Yes, this is clearly the government's stand as we are now entering the next lap after the politics of survival. <laughs> there are more, there are many, many more examples. <laughs> Then I uh, do not endorse the statements made by the characters. For example, they objected to Alban saying, this is not so, this is sex case, this is said, it's a proving day. <laughs> and it will not be offensive. People don't want to be happy. And yes, they want to suffer, they want to hurt, they want to cry. Case, these are the personal thoughts of Madame, who is subsequently revealed to be a false prophet by the play. <laughs> Uh, similarly, King Sen's arguments against relations to some of Alban's speech were that he is shown as a false prophet. His suggestion is that I made changes to show Madame and Alban and such. That the sexually offensive parts be covered by theatre works, putting an RA rating on the play so that they may not be changed. This will cover Madame revealing that she runs a brothel and her orgasms equal soul speech. KS also asked me to consider other point. Should we make Paul a Pauline? <laughs> Should we make Paul not a minister and direct less and Chris not civil servants? Uh, KS says that the discerning audience will recognize that the Committee for the Cultivation of Soul is essentially a government board body, even if it did not make up it is not made of civil servants and ministers. That Derek says that Madam Soul and Alban are false prophets. Minister One has to make certain conclusions about the whole episode which will be constructive. The scene when he rejects Derek's report may have to end that way rather than the cynical existing one. A different name of, for the Asian dragon model, which they are happy about. Changing the title to the Lady of Soul, so that we does not mean we are advocating Madame and the Ottoman as machine. I forgot on all this actually. My own feelings are that we should try to get the script through without any changes at all. The main reason is that the censorship review committee has come up with the recommendations and so will be a good test of whether the recommendations mean a substantive easing of censorship or there's a cosmetic one. After all, going by the appendix to the report the committee submitted to the government in which it defined artistic merit and laid down broad guidelines for censoring them. So ought to be passed as it is. The sexually questionable parts could be dealt with by having an RA rating as suggested by King Sen. I also hope that so approved without changes will make it easier for subsequent playwrights, freeing them from going through the whole painful and unnecessary process that I did with so. 8th of November, last one. Oh, 8th November. The Press Club organized a forum with Tommy Cole on the censorship review committee report. On political censorship, he said the government had refused to give any guidelines that was, and that was the reason that the censorship review committee was vague in this area. He said that the, polit the politicians are able to Take gentle humor against them. The kind like luck or the book Hello Go Chok Hello Chok Tong Goodbye Kwan Yu. The sinking feelings struck my heart as he said it because the humor in the song is definitely <laughs> not gentle. <laughs> Indeed, it was not gentle. But they approved it, yeah. Not they single, approved it in not the Not a single word was cut. Yeah. So now having made you read all that.
<laughs> How do you respond? You've forgotten all about it, is it? Yeah, so but, but it is the same thing. Now, I mean, you know, we, I, I study censorship and I'm involved in arts and as a uh, mm. uh, arts, uh, you know, freedom advocate, I guess. It's the same. It's the funniest, weirdest things. You think that civil servants have better, better things to do with their time, right? Like, um, yeah, how, how many seconds is the kissing, how bright it is, uh, 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 you cannot say this, you cannot say that. It's like, when's it going to change? Like, get over it, no? I mean, uh, yeah, who cares anyway? It's a play! <laughs> who cares? As, as even the playwrights admit, it doesn't change anything, right? So why is it okay, no? Just give it up. Uh, but I guess they have the jobs now. <laughs> So when this, in, in 93, right, it was really quite big because it came, it was, as you said, the first test case for the Censorship Review Committee. Right? Now, when you, uh, when the play passed completely uncut, right, it was clean. And it was staged in a slightly, how should I put it, phantasmagoric way, where you had everything slightly exaggerated and elevated, fabulous set by Chang Um what, again, when you saw that, after all that battle, after writing it and so on and so forth, when you saw that production, how did you feel about that whole journey, that trip, and that the play has been subsequently restaged many times, staged this year, 2015, right, seeing it again and all. What are your thoughts about it? Just go back to 1993 if you can. K See, and KC staged it a couple of years ago, right? Also yes. censorship involved. Yeah. Yes, attempted censorship. This play is a story not about censorship, but attempted censorship. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it just blew me away because, uh, first of all, it's my real sort of full blown theatre experience. I, I had seen a uh, home, mm. but it's very small scale. This is like King Sen and Tay Tong. I mean, Tay Tong is uh, first time I really see him on stage. It's so powerful. There's Rani, mm. there's Jacinta, there's Tracy uh, Pang in the, <laughs> As the S machine. Uh, yeah, pneumatic doll suit. Uh, it was really, really uh, uh, sort of, so, so, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I I sort of like understood what theatre was about mm. uh, in, in that kind that kind of scale, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah. I, then I suppose it's like I must say that after you play, you feel like ah, okay. What's next, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, okay. It's done. It's done. <laughs> it's done. Yeah. I'm gonna take you all the way back now to a place.